I come from a recording background. I worked for Decca, the record company in London, uh, in their classical side. I was recording uh, most of the time throughout my career in the United States, the big orchestras there and famous conductors, but I also uh, worked a lot in Vienna in the Musikverein and also in the Concertgebouw in Amsterdam. Uh, so I've uh, had a history of working in nice acoustics. For over 20 years or so, overlapping that, I worked for Luciano Pavarotti in the three tenors. I was their sound engineering director. And uh, when Pavarotti retired at the end of 2005, uh, I came to work for Maya to help them develop uh, Constellation. I didn't invent it, but uh, I've had a lot to do with the uh, development of the technology in other ways. Um, here in Hamburg, we've um, got a, quite a large system and it's quite a sophisticated system uh, because of the level of complexity and flexibility that the, um, the school require. So we have um, 142 loudspeakers in the system, which isn't, in itself isn't unusual for a constellation system, but, and we've got 48 microphones. Um, the microphones are distributed throughout the stage and throughout the auditorium, and this is very important because with Constellation we don't just um, uh, capture sound above the performers and then add reverberation effects to them through, uh, that are distributed throughout the room. Instead we actually change the acoustic of the room. Um, and we do that by capturing sound on the microphones, applying uh, those microphones to multi-channel early reflection and reverberation processes and then returning the output from those processes back into the loudspeakers via a complex matrix. The way the system works is we have, it's a digitally based system it uses linear microphones, linear loudspeakers, and linear di digital signal processing. That's very important that at no point in the signal chain is any distortion introduced. So we're very fussy about that. Um, the, the idea is that we capture the sound of the performers and of the auditorium itself on microphones. The microphones over the stage are placed lower um, within the critical distance of the building, so typically five metres from the floor. They capture the sound of performers or musicians. We then uh, apply that sound to the reverberators and the early reflection generators, and it's returned back into the hall. Now, as we add more gain to the system, so we increase the amount of regeneration between the microphones and the loudspeakers, and so we can extend the reverberation time. In addition, of course, our digital reverberators help top that up. So we can actually, uh, in this particular hall, we have a range of reverberation times, uh, uh, ranging from 0.6 seconds, going right up to um, four seconds. And in last night's concert, we actually used four second reverberation time to simulate a cathedral. Um, but typically for classical music, we would be around 1.5 to two seconds reverberation time. Flexibility. It's possible and some outstanding acousticians um, have made some really good flexible concert halls with moving panels, uh, moving ceilings, uh, all sorts of surfaces that can be reflective one minute and absorptive the next, diffusive, lots and lots of different ways of doing this. But these halls require a lot of volume because in order to achieve long reverberation times for classical music, you actually need quite a significant volume in the room. Uh, and if you look at the Music for Rhyme, which is a beautiful hall, it's tall. It's got a large volume for, compared with the number of occupants. Um, with Constellation, using our Veras reverberators, we're able to actually create the same reverberation times, but in a smaller volume. So uh, if you're in a new building, 
or in a building that wasn't ever designed to be a classical music concert hall, we can uh, in effectively increase the volume and so give it the kind of reverberation times that you would only get from a much larger space. But in addition to that, we can also um, use constellation in different ways. We can use it for speech, uh, we can use it for drama. And in that particular mode, we shut off the reverberation side of constellation and just use the early reflections, which we distribute around the system um, in a controlled way and a very calculated way to actually enable speech to be um, heard clearly in different parts of the, of the building. I think that this particular school here is a living example and one of the most vibrant I've come across of uh, how music and performance is changing. Not just music, but every kind of performance. And um, I think that there is every reason to believe that uh, the intervention of electronics in music is here to stay. I have no doubt about that. And uh, there was a lot of uh, concern many years ago about the idea of using electronics to change acoustics, but we've had a lot of practice at this now and we're doing it in a way that the audience, depending on what we're doing, shouldn't be aware of this. So uh, for much of the concert last night here, we were in a lovely reverberant acoustic, just right for chamber music, and that suited uh, an awful lot of the, the um, performances here, but you wouldn't really have thought about it much because we just get the acoustic just right for that particular type of performance. And if we're doing a good job, you shouldn't be aware of it. If we're trying to create special effects and turn a small room into a cathedral, of course you're gonna be aware of that, but that's another application for it. And we also did some of that here too. Well, we, we're, we're very happy to have been here. Um, Dr. Haidu, uh, I think, uh, did a very brave thing in inviting us to uh, install this system here. And we're still in the process of voicing it. Um, so we've had a, a, the initial voicing. Uh, we, uh, I did some more changes yesterday and uh, we're coming back in February to do some more. That's the nice thing about this. You can adjust it. You can, you can make the system perform in a way that the clients or the customer is happy. It's been great being here. We're really enjoying this project. It's an ongoing saga for us. It's not something that we're just installing and walking away. So we'll be back and we'll see you in February. Looking forward to it.